that's great. I don't know if my notes are going to make any sense at all. Well, good luck to us. Good luck to us. But I think it'll work. I think it's going to work out. It always does. I think it's going to be great. We're going to do great. And hey, guess what? Hmm. The whole point is that we enjoy it. Yeah. God damn it, let's have fun. So let's just enjoy it. Okay. Hello again. Hi. I'm Dan. I'm Lisa. This is Siblings in Zion, our podcast. And this is an episode that in particular we made plans for nearly a year ago. And uh, going to be the next one we did before things got weird up for a while. But uh, we still have our original notes from when we were going to prepare for it. And um, every time I thought about doing this, I feel this sense of responsibility. Your perfectionism kicks in every time we go to do this. This particular topic, because I'm thinking of the topic bigger than really the, the idea that spawned the episode, which is our atheists evil, which a lot of people seem to assume. Like if you don't have religion, if you don't have faith, then how can you have ethics or morals? You're as good as dead. <laughs> Even if I didn't identify as an atheist or agnostic. Do you? Or with, well, we'll get to that. Okay. But I would Sorry. not assume that just because you don't <laughs> believe in a God or have a religion or have a faith, then you can't have ethics or morals. Right. I mean, that, that seems like a ridiculous... It's impossible. Presumption. But it, it's unfortunately one that one in the atheist seat will come up against all the time. Yeah. It's like the question as a vegan, where do you get your protein? Yeah. It's the equivalent of that. It's kind of the same in that if you had pursued that at all yourself, it's very quickly discovered that protein is in so much. It's not just meat. (laughs) Yeah. It's just a question that people ask when clearly they haven't thought about it. Right. Just because you don't understand how one would do that doesn't mean one can't do that. Yeah. And really, they absolutely can. It's a good comparison. So... What prompted my idea to do an episode on some theme of atheism and this idea of where do your morals come from is a chapter in the the small book by Sam Harris called Letter to a Christian Nation. And as far as his writing goes, it's it might be my least favorite or least recommended read to someone. It's written as directly to a Christian. The tone of it is, I don't see how it would be convincing to a Christian. To a Christian. Yeah. Is it condescending at all? It feels that way sometimes. Yeah. It's not his best work. I mean, there, there's so much of its other stuff that I would sure. recommend before it. I mean, the ideas are sound, but the presentation I feel isn't the best. But there's a chapter titled, Are Atheists Evil? And I'll be reading several passages and parts from that. But also one of the specific pieces of debate that I've seen around the topic of does God exist or why atheism versus religion or specifically Christianity is one of the many of Christopher Hitchens and William Lane Craig. I'll I'll leave a link to it in the the show notes. And Lane Craig is a... William Lane Craig is... uh, Is he a professor? Wikipedia says he's an American analytic philosopher and a Christian theologian, apologist, and author. He's a professor of philosophy at Houston Baptist University, Hmm. which seems a little ironic, but he's one of the more popular Christian apologists that I've seen. But he seems to have, like, right off the bat, a fundamental misunderstanding of what atheism or an atheist is. Mm, Yeah. What atheism means. Yeah. It seems like they spent their whole discussion talking about the the differences well, in language. Well, had, had to repeatedly say, "Look, I wish you'd get this this point right." He he keeps pitting the the argument against why Christopher Hitchens has to argue why atheism is true, which sounds right. like a stupid phrase. And what does that even mean? Right, because atheism is not a school of thought. It's not a religion. It's not a club. It's not an organization. It's not even a belief. It's a lack of belief. And that's it. Lack of belief and a God. Yeah. Which, <laughs> so at one point, he, his first like rebuttal in this debate, after they've presented their arguments, he says, you seem to be redefining atheism as some sort of ah-theism. 
and you can hear Christopher Hitchens like, well, that that's what it means. So where are you with this? <laughs> it's really frustrating. And he repeats it later. Like, as Christopher Hitchens has addressed it, said, hey, man. Hey, man. Let's get on the same page here. He also seems, just like many of them that I've seen, to be totally on a script. Like they've prepared yeah. what they're going to say. Yeah. And even if the person that they're debating with has pushed back on some fundamental idea or thesis that they have, they keep going back to it because it's what they've written out. They're not reacting they're not, in the moment. No, which is pretty well on display here. But I think it's a, a great example of what the misunderstanding, even from somebody who should be absolutely aware of, of what a fallacious presentation of atheism that is. Yeah. So I guess before we start... You should know what you're arguing against. Sure, if you're going to be taken seriously. Yeah, I, I think with the knowledge that we have of Mormonism, yeah. for an example... We've been pretty deeply exposed yeah. to the truth claims of Mormonism yes. and know what we're arguing against. More so, in my case, than I ever was when I was going to church. Same. And being indoctrinated. <laughs> they left a lot of stuff out. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. A lot of holes. Had to do some digging. <laughs> like Joseph Smith. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, Jesus. Before I start reading some of these passages, I figured we should establish what our view of atheism is, or, or what what is atheist versus theist, or even agnostic. Where, yeah. do we, where do we land on that? Well, I think in order to get to a label, I'd have to say what I feel, mm -hmm. and then maybe you can help me okay. get to that top level. I don't believe in a God. Mm -hmm. I don't believe that there's a divine creator I definitely don't believe that there's a being that looks like us that started all of this. I find myths valuable, like Joseph Campbell mm -hmm. explains. I see the usefulness in having a shared idea of how this all started and why we're here. But I wouldn't say that any of those myths are 100% completely true because we have no way of knowing that. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, there's no way to know. Either way. So I get where the term agnostic comes from. And I guess I fall into that camp because I can't say for sure either way, but I don't like to think that there's a God. It makes me uncomfortable. Yeah, I guess a further question would be, would you even want that to be true? I don't want there to be a God. Right. Is that part of atheism? Uh, I mean, it's an, an addition to it. Not only do I not believe it's true, I, don't, I wouldn't even want it to be true. Yeah. But that's not why I don't believe it. Right. Agnostic would be defined as someone who believes that nothing is known or can be known about the existence or nature of God or anything beyond the material. Right. So not just to say, I don't believe there's a God, but... I don't think we can even know. Neither of us, no, no one can even know that there was. Can I be both? Yes. There's agnostic atheism. Okay. Which is very specific. I'm that. Yeah. So there you go. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Agnostic is a person who claims neither faith or disbelief All right. in God. So it seems insufficient. Oh, wait. To me. So then maybe I'm not agnostic because I don't believe that there's a God. Well, the agnostic part is I don't claim to know either way. I just don't I don't have the belief oh, in a God. I see. I see. Okay. No, yeah. I'm keeping that. Yeah. I you, I mean, how could you say I know sure. there is no God? The same thing could be said. How can you say you know that there is? Yeah. What do you have that I don't? Exactly. Extraordinary claims demand extraordinary evidence. Christopher Hitchens says. Many people say, of course. Well, I wrote that down specifically. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, Ricky, Ricky Gervais says, if people didn't invent gods, I wouldn't have to deny them. Yeah. Hmm. It choose to that, mate. <laughs> I myself would say, of, of course, I don't. I have no claim to make that I know there isn't. But just as much as anyone who believes in a God can say that they know, I will stand on the ground of, I know just as much as you do, that there isn't. Fair. The universe is knowable. And we know so much more than the people who wrote the words that are collected in the Bible. Fair. So much more. Yeah. Something that, that I have also heard Christopher Hitchens say is, 
religion is the first and worst attempt to explain yeah. what's going on. Sure. It's not invaluable. It's not nothing. No. It was an attempt. Yeah. Holding on to that attempt, holding on to the Old Testament as unchangeable truth makes no sense to me. There's so much wrong that is written in that particular book. Fair. How could you really, I mean, I really don't understand how anyone can believe that there was an Adam and Eve. She was made from his rib. <laughs> that they were in a literal <laughs> Garden of Eden. And that that whole story actually took place. And, and that's the, the reason. And the serpent was like, eat the fruit. <laughs> because, <laughs> what? <laughs> so you're an atheist. Here's my reticence. Because that word and the term seem insufficient. Because it seems so misunderstood. Yeah. That's so much is applied to it yeah. that it that you never doesn't said. represent. Yeah. And, and atheists don't claim that it does. Yeah. Because people hear the word atheist and they associate all of these traits to mm -hmm. that word. But they're not hearing a right. theist. Mm -hmm. All you're saying is, I don't believe there's a God. Right. You're not claiming anything else. No, I'm certainly not claiming a replacement for what you have. Yeah. I'm just saying, I don't believe in what you have. Yeah. And I don't see a good reason why I should. No. Your feelings about it and your experiences, if they're good enough for you, they're good enough for you. But how could they be good enough for me? They're not. No. And on the same token, I love talking about Jesus. Mm -hmm. I love listening to Pete Holmes talk about Jesus sure. on this podcast. I love all that. I can get into that. But I don't take it as 100% truth. I take it as a myth to learn something from mm -hmm. symbolically. That's it. Yeah. And that is, it seems to be, sufficient. Yeah. Because that leaves room for so much more. If you decided that's it and that's all there is and I don't need or want to know anything else or learn anything else or I, I don't care about the Tao Te Ching or the Buddha the scriptures. Bhagavad Gita. Yeah. I don't need any of that, and I don't mm -hmm. care. Who cares what they had to say? Who cares what Plato has to say? Who cares what David Hume has to say? All and, I care about is Jesus. And Christopher Hitchens. And, <laughs> and, and we're just reading um, <laughs> book titles that are right next to us. <laughs> yeah, when I start my morning, when I have been starting my morning with Richard Rohr the past month or two, mm -hmm. it's filled my head with yeah. all these great, lovely ideas, and it is a great start to the day, you know? And he attributes them to God and, and Jesus and, and the universal Christ. And that works for him. And that's fine. But he doesn't think that if I don't agree with him, I'm going to hell. Exactly. Which is what's so great about him. And he places so much more meaning on so much more based on his belief. Yes. In Christ. Yes. Not just his salvation or how much he should care about mine. It's so refreshing to read something that's so open-minded and yet still be talking about Christianity. Mm -hmm. Did you want to talk about the debate or was there something you, else you wanted to talk about? Because I have a column of what Lane Craig said oh, and what Christopher Hitchens rebuttaled with. Sure. Do you want to go through that? Sure, yeah. For a second? It's not that long. Unless there's something else you wanted to do first. Well, not, no, we can, we can get through that first, okay? yeah. His full name is William Lane Craig? Yes. I don't know why I just call him Lane Craig. I thought that was his first and last name. Nope. He said, if there is no God, there is no objective morality. That's the logic he's running with. Right. He does say that a lot. He says, objective moral duties. <laughs> duties. Okay, you have a duty. Yeah, he does seem to really believe that, but I don't really understand what he's basing that on. It just seems like such a leap. Huge. If you don't have God, you don't have morality. It's Why? only through divinity. We only don't kill people because right. God said not to. Mm -hmm. And Christopher Hitchens said morality is a social construct and it facilitates survival. Yeah. We have learned socially and we've learned through repetition and conditioning mm -hmm. how to behave in civilization. In order to survive. Yeah. Yep. Not just physically. Right. Emotionally. Yeah. To thrive. Yeah. We understand that we can feel pain emotionally and physically in, in many forms. And we know, we have learned that we can avoid it. And part of that is avoiding it for other people. Yeah. 
God doesn't need to be the originator of that, and neither does any man who says that that came from God. Yeah. The idea that for hundreds of thousands of years, at least, human beings had no way of knowing that raping and killing wasn't a great thing to do until the Ten Commandments came back down from the mountain. Yeah. It sells a lot of our evolution as humans pretty damn short. Yeah. A lot of people do seem to have that idea that without my faith, I would be a terrible person. Yeah. We can recognize that when we do something nice for other people, they return it generally. Mm -hmm. And things work better when you cooperate. Yes. William Craig, Mm -hmm. that guy says, Jesus Christ is the son of God. And like you said, extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence is how Christopher Hitchens responded. Where's the proof that these really happened, that these things really happened? Yeah. We don't even have anything from Jesus specifically. It's all people who have written about the experience. Jesus didn't write books. No. Probably couldn't. Probably couldn't. I used to believe that evidence of that could be found through other things, but I was making great leaps of faith Mm -hmm. to interpret experiences and feelings as manifestations of a truth that Jesus is the son of God. Yeah. If he was born from a virgin who never had sex and still had yeah. like still gave birth to him, that doesn't line up with what we know about human sexuality and biology. What is the m- the more likely explanation that they were trying to not get stoned to death or that she was actually impregnated by the spirit of God? Yeah. Craig says the universe could not exist Without a designer. Yeah. And says who? Says the Bible? Right. Where are you getting that from? That is a really definitive statement. And it it has been totally explained away over and over again. By science. And there's tons of examples of this fallacy of thinking that just because we can't understand how it could happen, how something could be seemingly designed and there being no designer yeah physical or or spiritual or otherwise that there is no other explanation for it hitchin says well if that's the case then there are major design flaws Mm -hmm. example the sun will explode and there are no other habitable planets except for earth Mm -hmm. where's Hmm. the foresight in this you know yeah if God knew that we were going to overexploit our resources right. and that we would overfish and pollute the oceans. And why do we do that? And why? Because we think that Jesus will come back and burn everything anyway. And so who cares? That it was made for us. Yeah, because we have dominion. This is the great flaw of humanity that any of us and a great deal of us think that this earth was made with us in mind. We're the stars of this show. To use and take advantage of for our benefit at the expense and the peril of the rest of the living things. We'll eat them. We'll f them. (laughs) We'll sell them. We'll domesticate them. We will cook them. We'll harness them. (laughs) We'll walk them. We'll We'll love some of them. them. We'll put them in little tanks that we can look at and go, hey, you put do, boo, 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 boo. <laughs> and we'll smash some of them. <laughs> oh, yeah. We'll smash a lot of them. If they induce our disgust reaction, it's over. Yeah. If they don't look They're a certain way. Cuddly, yeah. We'll keep them around for a few years. Sure. We'll feed them. Yeah. Yeah. The squirrels, we'll give them peanuts. <laughs> sure. Cute. Cute. They're like rats, but with fluffy tails. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> And again, this is one of the foremost, this is one that Christians are glad that are like, that are out there debating people like Christopher Hitchens, the late Christopher Hitchens, RIP. And he uses these terrible, tired arguments. One of the terms coined for Christopher Hitchens is the hitch slap when he (laughs) just takes somebody down with his, his, his great use of the English language. And he does it so many times, even in this particular debate, but there's compilations of these things on YouTube, thankfully. He's one of our great orators, writers, mostly of of essays, 
but also one of the foremost public advocates for atheism and really anti-religion. I, I think I've heard him identify as himself not only as atheist, but anti-theist. Yeah, I like that. Certainly owns it. Yeah. And he certainly puts it forward in a, in a very He's very passionate. Strong way. Yeah. Craig said that the improbability of evolution is a miracle and thus evidence for the existence of God. What? Yeah. There's a lot of that shit. Like, what? Wait. Why is evolution so improbable? It happens all the time. How could it be improbable? It's literally the reason we exist. I guess you could say it's as unlikely as the universe itself. Yeah. And sure, it is miraculous, but it's not a miracle in the term that it's an act of God. Right. Again, that it is seemingly so unbelievable that then nothing else but God can explain it. Which is not an explanation. It's not an explanation at all. How? Why? What's the point? What is is all this for? Where would a God get a reason, a vision, a purpose? For this, what would that come from? We are trying to find the purpose and putting it on a god. Many gods. So many gods. We are usually talking about the God of Abraham. But even in Mormonism, we're not really. We're we're talking about Joseph Smith's idea of God. Yeah. So, one thing to make it personal, I guess, and relate it to our upbringing is that the only difference between my atheistic view of gods and that of my father is that I take it one God further. I don't believe in his God, but neither of us believe in any of the other gods out there right. that are proposed. Yeah, that's a good point. That's a great point. Every person is atheistic in terms of everyone else's God. Exactly. But it's so theirs. easy to dismiss other people's cots. Yeah, and it's just as easy to dismiss yours. If you're willing to. Yeah. But we put so much stock in it, and we're so wrapped up in it, and it's so much a part of our identity that we don't want to lose it. Yeah, but there are other terms we could even use to call the unknown, the force of life, than anthropomorphizing that into a God being. Yeah. That isn't necessary. Right. But it seems like a really natural inclination. Well, we we have been doing it for a very, very long time. And I hear a lot of people use that as a reason to believe that God exists. The very fact that humans have that inclination Mm -hmm. and have had it for so long Mm -hmm. that they feel it's significant and unexplainable enough that that turning towards a deity is universal and therefore true. Yeah. Must mean something. But, I mean, we do that with a lot of things. A lot of things line up that way in myth. Yeah. And stories from other cultures. Patterns that don't have anything to do with God. Yeah. We're just all human. How about that? How about that? How about that? (laughs) The last notes I made about what Hitchens said, is like you said, atheism is not true or false, quote unquote. We don't need to prove that there isn't a God. We just don't believe in a supernatural creator. We established that. Theists necessarily believe in God's omnipotence, Mm -hmm. which means he's all powerful. Yeah. Omnipresent, omnipotent. What's the third omni? He's all present. He is all powerful. And all knowing. And all knowing. What's the word for all knowing? Omniscient. Thank you. So theists necessarily believe in God's omnipotence, but we're born into this terrifying existence with all kinds of suffering and no answers. And so if he's all powerful, he's a very cruel designer because there are so many pitfalls and so many random outcomes. Yeah. And luck of the draws. Yeah. That it just seems illogical and not thought out at all. Yeah, but God's ways are higher than our ways. It's a mystery. Suffering will teach you things. A good example of this is the 
Epicurean paradox, and there's several visual representations you can find of this. You were reading Epicurious. Epicurious? 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 <laughs> I'm epically curious about what Epicurious yeah. had to say. It's a graph that, that shows uh, questions, and if this can God, or oh, does God, and if no, then it's this. I think you've sent this to me before. I think I have. Can God prevent evil? If no, then God is not all-powerful. Right. Does God know about all the evil? No, then God is not all-knowing. Does God want to prevent evil? If not, then God is not good or is not all loving. That's part of it. Could God have created a universe without these? No. Then all the way back to the beginning, God is not all powerful. Then why is there evil if it's to test us? If God is all knowing, he would know what we would do if we were tested. Therefore, no need to test us. And if it's because of Satan, then an all powerful, all knowing, all good God could and would destroy Satan. I'm nodding so hard. So hard with the nods. <laughs> Could God have created a universe without these? If yes, then why didn't he? If it's because to test us, then go back to if God is all-knowing. And if it's free will, could God have created a universe with free will but without evil? If no, then God is not all-powerful. If yes, then why didn't he? Why? Yeah, what and again, I, he, as if it would be... Sure, as if it would be a male. male. Or anything. Yeah. The thought I had after listening to this debate that I wrote down is that the ones who have the answers, quote, mm -hmm. were born into it or yeah. chose to believe it later in life. And it still doesn't make life more manageable for those without that worldview. Mm-hmm. Whether you choose to believe that there is a creator or not, it still doesn't change the suffering that millions and billions of people experience yep. on an everyday basis. Yep. You know, to various degrees on larger and smaller scales. Yeah. And it makes no account for that. And aside from could you be ethical or moral or quote unquote good without a faith or belief or religion, the question also is can you be happy? Yeah. In your life without those things. Yeah. And certainly yes. Sure. And not because you want to sin or do sin or if you don't have these constructs to lead your life, that your life will be horrible. And you will be horrible. And you will do horrible things and you won't care because you don't have a God and you don't think you're accountable to anything or anyone. Again, just because that is how you imagine your life without this whatever set of beliefs and structures that you have doesn't mean anything for anyone else. Exactly. And how they leave their life, lead their life. And you could argue that Christians... Or how they leave their life. <laughs> <laughs> you could argue that Christians have done a lot of not moral things. Of course. Or religious people of all types, and you can immediately think of tons of them. That is part of what Sam Harris was writing about in this chapter of Letter to a Christian Nation called Are Atheists Evil? If you are right to believe that religious faith offers the only real basis for morality, then atheists should be less moral than believers. In fact, they should be utterly immoral. Are they? Do members of atheist organizations in the United States commit more than their fair share of violent crimes? Do members of the National Academy of Sciences, 93% of whom reject the idea of God, lie and cheat and steal with abandon? We can be reasonably confident that these groups are at least as well behaved as the general population, and yet atheists are the most reviled minority in the United States. Polls indicate that being an atheist is a perfect impediment to running for high office in our country. I mean, can you imagine a person winning the presidential race who did not claim a belief in God. Is Joe Biden Christian? He's a Catholic. Has every president been faithful? Or at least claimed to be, yeah. Obama? Yeah. Really? Yeah. What? It does, if you profess Christianity in this country, it does put you immediately on the good side of a lot of people. Yeah. Without it, having to it, give too much detail. Even if he's detail. not a member of my church, as long as he it, has a it, faith, <laughs> then He's that's no good. schmuck. Because <laughs> if he didn't, can't trust him. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. He or she, obviously. Clearly. 
Something that just ain't right about you. <laughs> Are you a believer? Do you believe in our Lord and Jesus? Jesus? <laughs> <laughs> Do we believe in our Lord and Jesus? <laughs> Christians invariably declare that monsters like Adolf Hitler, Joseph Stalin, Mao Zedong, Pol Pot, and Kim Il-sung spring from the w- womb of atheism. While it is true that such men are sometimes enemies of organized religion, they are never especially rational. In fact, their public pronouncements are often delusional on subjects as diverse as race, economics, national identity, the march of history, and the moral dangers of intellectualism. And Hitler's atheism seems to have been seriously exaggerated. This is a quote oh. from a speech from Adolf Hitler. Right. My feeling as a Christian points me to my Lord and Savior as a fighter. It points me to the man who once in loneliness, surrounded by a few followers, recognized these Jews for what they were and summoned men to fight them, and who, God's truth, was greatest not as a sufferer, but as a fighter. In boundless love, as a Christian and as a man, I read the passage which tells us how the Lord at last rose in his might and seized the scourge to drive out of the temple the brood of vipers and adders. Boy, how terrific was his fight for the world against the Jewish poison. As a Christian, I have also a duty to my own people. So yeah, I've I've heard to this day. That's all from Hitler? Yeah. Weird. The argument that, well, well. Yeah. Atheist. Who do you got? Hitler? Well, Hitler was an atheist. No, he wasn't. Yeah, that doesn't really fit the the idea that people have. No, of course of not. Of his persona. Given the benefit of the doubt, I can understand why you might assume that someone like Hitler was without a religion or a faith or a belief in God. But that's an assumption. And if you don't know that for sure. Yeah, it's really weird it? how people equate atheism with evil that's kind of the point here yeah it's really weird guys it's really weird don't do that don't stop and why and don't and like why and like no (laughs) and like don't (laughs) i continue the problem with such tyrants is not that they reject the dogma of religion but they embrace other life-destroying myths most become the center of quasi-religious personality cults requiring the continual use of propaganda for its maintenance now, have we not seen that? And now, this book was written like 16 years And this years is all ago. from Letter to a Christian Nation? Yeah. Okay. Has this not been clearly seen in the cult of personality led by uh, Donald Trump? <laughs> there is a difference between propaganda and the honest dissemination of information that we generally expect from a liberal democracy. Aside from the Make America Great Again cult, I guess you could call it, from that spawns QAnon, which is an especially dangerous, really nuts type of rabbit hole to go down. But it appears American Christian people are extremely susceptible to going down that line of thinking. I don't like it. Mm. It's amazing how much they can question the government and there must be these shadow organizations and, and celebrities. That, Baby eating that politicians. Eating babies and drinking their blood. In and, the back of pizza parlors. And I don't have any evidence for any of that, but <laughs> I believe it. But I believe it 100%. It is time that Christians stop pretending that a rational rejection of your faith entails the blind embrace of atheism as a dogma. Again, this is me talking. It is not a dogma. It is a rejection of such a thing. One need not accept anything on insufficient evidence to find the virgin birth of Jesus to be a preposterous idea. And I'm sorry, but it is. It is preposterous. Yeah. So is the birth of of the Buddha from the side of his mother. Yeah. It's a miraculous story put on to a person who seems to have existed. And probably symbolic. Them. Yeah. Because we all know that people are born from <laughs> uteruses, okay? Okay. Vagina. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's where that's, that comes from. That's the technical term. Yeah. The problem with religion, as with Nazism, Stalinism, or any other totalitarian mythology, is the problem of dogma itself. 
I know of no society in human history that ever suffered because its people became too desirous of evidence in support of their core beliefs. Think about that. Think about it. There is some statistics and examples of the many nations, countries that we know of that are way, way less religious than the United States. Yeah. Norway, Iceland, Australia, Canada, Switzerland, Sweden, Switzerland, Belgium, Japan, the Netherlands, Denmark, and the United Kingdom are among the least religious societies on earth. And according to the United Nations Human Development Report, which is, this is back in 2005, they are also the healthiest, as indicated by life expectancy, adult literacy, per capita income, educational attainment, gender equality, homicide rate, and infant mortality. Conversely, the 50 nations now ranked lowest in terms of the United Nations Human Development Index are unwaveringly religious. Let's move to Europe. I've thought about it many times. We'll I mean, think no pla- about it no some places, more. But, <laughs> no place is perfect. No, of course not. But a lot of systems seem to be a lot better because they're more humanistic. Yeah. I mean, healthcare, just on its own. The United States is a prime example of how it should not be done. Yeah. Other analysis paint the same picture. The United States is unique among wealthy democracies in its level of religious adherence. It is also uniquely beleaguered by high rates of homicide, abortion, teen pregnancy, sexually transmitted disease, and infant mortality. The same comparison holds true within the United States itself. Southern and Midwestern states characterized by the highest levels of religious literalism are especially plagued by the above indicators of societal dysfunction, while the comparatively secular states of the Northeast conform to European norms. While political party affiliation in the United States is not a perfect indicator of religiosity, it is no secret that the quote-unquote red states are primarily red because of the overwhelming political influence of the conservative Christians. If there were a strong correlation between Christian conservatism and societal health, we might expect to see some sign of it in the red state America. We don't. Of the 25 cities with the lowest rates of violent crime, 62% are in blue states and 38% are in red states. Of the 25 most dangerous cities, 76% are in red states, 24 in blue states. Three of the five most dangerous cities in the United States are in the pious state of Texas. Pious. And again, this is all 15-year-old data. I have looked at more recent stuff, and it's only more clear, these numbers. Yeah. Uh, Last one here. Of course, correlational data of this sort do not resolve questions of causality. Belief in God may lead to societal dysfunction. Societal dysfunction may foster a belief in God. Each factor may enable the other, or both may spring from the same deeper source of mischief. Leaving aside the issue of cause and effect, however, these statistics prove that atheism is compatible with the basic aspirations of a civil society. They also prove conclusively that widespread belief in God does not ensure a society's health. And that is to the point of how could we be good? How could we be moral? How could we sustain healthy life, physical, emotional, spiritual, without a dogma? But that dogma. And these dogmatic societies and systems seem to prevent such achievements in humanity. Yeah, because you're so focused on a goal that's unattainable. Yeah. And us versus them, divisive. Yeah, and and using religious dogma as reason for your bigotry and racism yeah. and sexism yeah. and narcissism seems to be completely antithetical to the Christianity taught by the man it's named after. Yeah. It's baffling to me, but that's a whole separate conversation, I think. Sure. When it's spoken about in terms that are encompassing and compassionate and inclusive, I can get on board with that. Yeah. But not when it's used to belittle and degrade and to judge and other separate. people's behavior and life. And to hold such a belief in your head that if somebody doesn't believe in Jesus, they can't be a good person to, that lives a good life. And they can't be trusted. Richie Rohr. <laughs> Say yes. Humans are punished by their sins more than for their sins. Goodness is its own reward 
and evil is its own punishment. I really like that distinction because growing up Mormon, it was so black and white. Mm -hmm. It was like tangible that if I sinned, my actions caused a punishment. It was like a domino effect. Not that the action in itself and the effect of hurting another person alone was undesirable. Yeah. I just feel like believing that breaking a rule is worse than hurting someone, that just doesn't seem valuable to me. You're missing the point. Yeah. We should be helping each other. If you do something wrong, it should be understood that that's the cause of the pain is that you hurt someone else and you hindered your progress and and theirs. Well, especially if you deliberately did that. Right. Thank you. Knowingly. That's what I meant. People can find themselves hurt quite a bit. Sure. And if that, if we had to care about that. Right. Day in and day out. Sure. Moment to moment. If you had to take ownership nowhere. of that. Yeah. No. Thank you for distinguishing that. I meant deliberately. Yeah. Seeking to cause suffering. Mm -hmm. He also said, did you ever notice that Jesus himself was not really that upset at the bad behavior that most of us call sin? Instead, he directed his critical attention toward people who did not think they were sinners, who could not see their own shadows or dark sides, or acknowledge their complicity in the world's domination systems. Most of us would rather attack an easy, visible target, preferably sex and body-based issues, and thus feel pure or moral. Like any true spiritual master, Jesus exposed the root causes of evil, almost always some form of idolatry, and did not waste time punishing the mere symptoms as moralistic people usually do. And there's so many sins you can commit that don't have anything to do really with anything else. It's just if you thought a certain way, if you masturbated, God forbid. No! Oh, heavens. Then you have... You've offended a great, God. Great sin. Great. And you must repent and you must give a detailed account of what you did. <laughs> to a bishop or stake leader. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. It's very important. Only they can deliver the message and counsel with Heavenly Father and decide whether or not you can be forgiven or or what you need to do to repent. Can I tell you something? Sure. Every time I went to a bishop or stake leader to talk about like the guilt of masturbation, I was always upset because they never treated it as seriously as I wanted them to treat it. As a woman, they kind of like swept it under the rug. Hmm. They're like, oh, it's not a big deal. You're fine. And I'm like, no! Not really? I'm a terrible person! <laughs> <laughs> I was like, you don't get it! Huh. But it was like worse for boys. Yeah. Especially if you watched porn yeah. in order to masturbate. Sure. That was worse. I like sought out a professor at BYU-Idaho <laughs> that would like treat it with the gravity that I needed it to be treated with. I went to his office to talk about that was specifically with him and he wasn't even my bishop. <laughs> like I'm telling him all these details about like my sexuality to get his advice wow. on what I should do. And how I should I sh how I should repent properly, and what I can do in the future to avoid this. Sickening. Yeah, that sounds insane. <laughs> <laughs> how grateful I am <laughs> that you do not seek that out anymore. It's ridiculous that we're so focused on that as yeah, sin. It truly is. Clearly, there are other things to spend our energy on that are more beneficial for ourselves and humanity. Mm -hmm. It's upsetting. It's very upsetting. It's very upsetting. But yeah, I like that Richard Rohr points out that Jesus was not so focused on the rules and regulations as he was on changing people's hearts and minds. Yeah. And changing their minds about themselves and about God than saying, you can't drink coffee. I'm sorry. Yeah. That really offends me. Yeah. <laughs> I think that the definitely the worst thing is people who don't think that there's anything wrong with them. Like he's saying, people who think that their behavior, they're right. They're 100% right. Yeah. They don't do anything wrong ever. People who tell themselves that they're the best and the greatest. 
never do anything wrong. Yeah, I can think of those people need no, some redirection. No apologies. Yeah. No repentance. No change. No humility. Again, in in thinking about how I would bring this sort of topic to the table, I was very self conscious about doing it justice. Yeah. And right. being thorough in my presentation. Not I think you did great. Because there's just I have so many of the greatest arguments I have found and heard for the atheist position swirling around in my head. Just swimming in it. Together, and I would like to present all of them, but that I, I had to try and let go of, of that that mission because sure. really all I can do is present my position sure. based on this sort of stuff. Sure, and it's not your responsibility to present every argument. Yeah. That's up to people to seek out for themselves. And I, and I hope that anyone who is listening who hasn't already or finds any desire to will do, and I, and I will leave several links in descriptions wherever you're listening to this for this debate that we're referencing between Christopher Hitchens, an atheist, and William Lane Craig, a Christian apologist, and Sam Harris, Better book to read by him is Waking Up or even The End of Faith. Mm -hmm. Uh, Richard Dawkins, of course, is another great example of, he's a much less venomous figure. Than Christopher Hitchens? Yeah, he's a a very well-spoken, well-researched, and one argument that, you know, not, is not his own, but one that he, that he brings up is the thought experiment of uh, the brass teapot. In orbit. Hmm? Imagine I tell you there is a brass teapot that is orbiting the Earth. All right. Now, I can't prove to you that it's out there, but it would be on me to prove to you that it is. Sure. Not for you to prove to me that it isn't. Sure. Now, again, extraordinary claims. I would need to provide evidence for you to really believe that that is out there. Or you could just choose to, to believe it. I mean, it's not completely implausible. Sure. It's not likely. No. So. And that brass teapot needs you to pay 10% of yeah. your income Yeah. to the head of You're its gonna, church. to put some money into that teapot. And it's going to need you to pray to it morning, <laughs> noon, and night. Your salvation depends <laughs> on your belief that that brass teapot is orbiting the earth. And it's going to need you to stop having sex. <laughs> Out of wedlock. Okay. 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 And the brass teapot wants you to know that you can be with that teapot forever if you will only accept its true and beloved son, the small (laughs) brass kettle. (laughs) There are various versions of this teapot analogy. It doesn't have to be brass. It could be (laughs) made of china. But here's a little presentation of that by somebody else. If I were to suggest that between Earth and Mars, there is a China teapot revolving around the sun in an elliptical orbit, nobody would be able to disprove my assertion provided I were careful to add that the teapot is too small to be revealed even by our most powerful telescopes. But if I were to go on to say that, since my assertion cannot be disproved, it is intolerable presumption on the part of human reason to doubt it, I should rightly be thought to be talking nonsense. If, however, the existence of such a teapot were affirmed in ancient books, taught as the sacred truth every Sunday, and instilled into the minds of children at school, hesitation to believe in its existence would become a mark of eccentricity and entitle the doubter to the attentions of the psychiatrist in an enlightened age or of the inquisitor in an early time. So are there really only two camps? Is it just like people who believe in God and people who don't? That doesn't seem right. But I think a lot of people assume that. That doesn't seem right, those two camps? People who believe in God and people who don't? What else I mean, is there? There are those two camps, but I and those are pretty big camps, but there's a lot of smaller camps within them. I, I mean the I believe in God camp has a lot of different flags waving around. That's true. And you don't have to join a camp or anything to just identify as an atheist. Or to just exist. Just be. I'm here, man. I didn't choose to be here. Exactly. Mormons think I did, but I didn't. I didn't. I was not in the pre-existence like 
Hosanna, Hosanna <laughs> to God and the Lamb. Okay. <laughs> okay. I wasn't a anything, and then I was an embryo. I was a nothing. It's just evolution. That you exist and I exist. That's nuts. That's nuts, man. And that like we came from basically the same thing. Like the combination of our mother and our father's DNA. Yeah. What? <laughs> How do you explain that? What? Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa, yeah. man. But I really do appreciate that we take the time out to do this. Just to like pause and tell each other what we've been thinking about mm-hmm. and take time to just process, assess, reflect. I think it's really valuable. Yeah. It is for me. Same here. I'm not seeing a therapist right now, and this is all that gets <laughs> me through. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, we that have more of it coming. And this beer. More of it. <laughs> mm. More of it is on the way. Uh, actually, as we are recording this, we've already recorded several episodes for season three of this show. I think this will actually come out as the second one. Yeah. Because I have so much work to do. Because we talked too damn much. On the others that we've done. <laughs> They've ended up being a lot longer conversations that we've recorded before. Yeah. Yum, 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 So we hope that uh, you will come back. Come next, back next time, baby. Come uh, back. And I also assume that this is the the first in episodes that will revolve around the topic of non belief. Not sure. Not just in not believing in Mormonism, but yeah. not believing in a god being a creator. Wow! Remember how we used to be Mormon? Remember that? Wow, that's weird. Whoa! <sighs> oh. Oh. Well, for now, and until next time, we are siblings in Zion. We are. I'm Dan. I'm Lisa. Take care. Bye-bye. Enjoy your life. <laughs> Have fun You only get one. You only get one. Enjoy it while it lasts. There's no sequel <laughs> or a prequel for that matter. <laughs>